The following is a reading from part four, which is the final part of my serialized story, The Man Who Leapt Out of Time. This is a story that has four parts, each of which has been published on Amazon Kindle, each of which can be purchased for just one dollar. The, the passage I will be reading from today, uh, the setup is, in this concluding segment of the story, our man, an unwitting time traveler to the past, has successfully seduced his young wife, effectively cuckolding his younger self, and sending all of the characters on a tragic trajectory. The Man Who Leapt Out of Time, Part 4, The Concluding Chapter Of course, I couldn't just leave her there, but I could no longer hide myself from her, either. She had seen me. I don't know how or why it happened, but it did. I must have lost control during our lovemaking and accidentally flipped the internal switch that rendered me visible. I crept back to the car, having exhausted myself in a futile little freakout that did little to help matters. She was beginning to stir, and this time I took the passenger seat next to her. When her eyes met mine, she gasped reaching out to touch my face, while the rest of her body recoiled in apprehension. Finally, she spoke my name again. It marked the third time she had done so. The first utterance had happened in the midst of our initial tryst, the second when she had seen me for the first time, just before she passed out. Now she spoke it with conviction, even though her surety was also mingled heavily with incomprehension. I just stared into her eyes and said nothing, mainly because I felt there was little I could properly say at that moment. She sat up, tried to adjust her clothes slightly, but her skirt was still ripped and her blouse and bra all askew. Her panties had been flung carelessly into the underbrush and were surely now sunk beneath the mud which had gathered so abundantly with the sudden rainstorm that had struck heavily, then disappeared just as quickly. Singularly failing in her effort to look, quote, presentable, we were both still dripping wet. She leaned back again, still wearing a dazed expression, the look of one who had just been thoroughly and very pleasantly ravished, yet little understood the means or manner of her ravisher. Finally, She asked, in a peculiar, small, almost timid voice, "'You are my husband, are you not?' I told her that I was. "'But why do you look like you do?' "'I am fifty-three years old,' I said. "'I am your husband as an older man.' She nodded, still looking positively stupefied. Finally, she managed... Why are you here? I don't know, I said. Taking a deep breath, I added, You wouldn't believe me. At this point, she retorted, stopping short of completing the phrase, as if even saying I would be willing to believe anything were too weighty a thought to speak out loud. So I told her the truth, albeit not the entirety of the truth. I tried to kill myself, I said. But instead of winding up in heaven, hell, or purgatory, I was sent here, to the past. Why did you... She began to ask the question, but stopped. I said nothing, not wishing to reveal anything more about the future than was necessary. To this day, I am unsure what prompted my reticence on this score. It wasn't any back-to-the-future-esque mumbo-jumbo about being fearful of causing disturbances in the time-space continuum. It was something intensely more primal, as if being overly forthcoming would have severe psychic consequences, both for me and for her. Did I... did I try to stop you? she asked, with noticeable hesitation. I shook my head. 
You didn't know, I answered, but wouldn't say more. She leaned toward me and spoke in that earnest, reverent voice that by now I knew so well. I believe you. I don't know why I believe you, because it's all so absurd, but... She paused and touched my face. I know it is you. I have always known. Don't ask me how. When you love a man... The last bit was wormwood to hear, and I did my best to disguise the effect it had upon me. I looked away. Love is forever, after all, I muttered, doing my best to keep the bitterness out of my voice. She said nothing. I didn't look her way, but got the impression that she was mulling my words and considering their ramifications. Then she asked, Why did you come to me like this? I have no excuse, I told her plainly. Now I looked up, met her eyes. I wanted you. That's all.